in the Cumberland Museum, you can step back in time and get the live experience of a real mime. You will discover how common life was in those rough days. The first layer on the horizon is a bit stronger than usual. As you follow my shows, you know that I like a faraway glow on the horizon, just like the old masters did. This time I use more Elias and Crimson because we want to create a sunset. As the Dutch masters liked metaphors in the paintings, I want to use this sunset as a metaphor for the rise and fall of the coal empire. With a round filbert brush number 20, I make soft crisscross strokes. Use medium to make the paint nice and smooth. On the top layers, I use a bit more ultramarine blue and some grey. It's unbelievable how fathers don't like their sons to become an artist. I remember the quarrels with my father. What is the problem? I mean, come on, every profession has its challenges. But okay. For the clouds, I use yellow ochre, allies and crimson and a bit of purple because it's sunset clouds. I push the paint into the wet underlayer with a soft, dry filbert brush. You will find this hard to do, but after some practicing, it will succeed. Especially the highlight clouds. Put some paint on the brush and push it into the wet underlayer. Practice, practice, practice. Buy a paper pad and make thousands of nice clouds. It will work, I promise you. For this painting, I use oil paint, a nice, smooth, natural paint on linseed oil base. You hardly smell it and it's nature friendly. I use odorless thinner and odorless medium. I'm not allowed to mention brands, but any brand nowadays is good. And you can also follow this series in acrylics, but you have to use retarder and medium as this is a wet in wet technique. I paint some light orange at the lower part of the clouds as the sun is shining from below. 
Here I lay a base for the muddy water of the swamp. As you know, Chinese part of the town was situated in a swamp. Can you imagine all the mosquitoes and then that stinking water during a hot summer? Not a comfortable place to be. Now, you might think, what is that black chest hair coming out of his shirt? But it is the microphone, of course. Indeed, it looks a bit hairy, but that is the windscreen protection when we are filming also in the open outdoors, and it works. Here, I'm blending in the muddy water with a soft, clean filbert brush. I made dark reflections of the trees who are still not there, but they will show up, I guarantee. With the highlight color, I paint wiggling downwards some extra reflection of the sun. And then again, I blend it in with soft brush strokes and remember, no pressure. I want also some extra reflection for the water barrel. And again, I blend it in with a soft filbert brush. Don't overdo it, but if you need more reflection, just go ahead. But use medium to make the paint nice and smooth. If you follow my shows, then you know I like some movement in the water. You saw this trick before in my Cathedral Crove show, and let's do it again. It's so fun. Take the filbert brush and push some light grey into the wet paint. Don't overdo it, because it's all mud. But it's fun to do, and that's what's painting all about. Fun. This is the secret. Only fade out the top end of the move, not the lower part. And if it didn't succeed the first time, just let it dry and do it all over again. As you ever have been in a mine before, then you probably had the same feeling like me. Let's get out of here. I don't like narrow corridors and you will never find me in a cave. That's why I was so impressed when I read the history of these miners. In the meantime, you saw me putting up the background foliage with some different colors of gray. And now I'm finishing off with a highlight, the sunset reflection. I do this with a small round brush. Just let the brush slide over the wood and there you go. In 1850 the city council of Amsterdam decided to honor the famous painter Rembrandt with a number of paintings of every city he ever worked in. That was a chance for Cornelius. Listen to this.
take a look at the wonderful reflections of the water and all the incredible details like the rope for the horse and the clothing of the people. And this is the background foliage. I do it with a fan brush. I use two tones of grey on both sides, light and dark, and I wiggle and wiggle with this wonderful brush. With some dark grey and English red, I paint more trunks in the foreground. It's still rough, but I keep on going and building up the trunks with my palette stick and I use a small round brush. And as you can see, I sketch. I don't do lines, I sketch. And let's go to the other side of the canvas where I do exactly the same. Now and then, like here for instance, you will see a little glitch of my hand. Looks a bit strange, but it's just an overlapping film clip. It's easier for the eyes, so there's nothing wrong with your television set. And with almost no pressure on the brush, we can paint some smaller branches. The trick is use enough medium and with a very small round brush, no pressure at the end of the branch. And with some courage, it will happen. Don't forget to give the tree trunks a little bit of light with burnt sienna and white. With different tones of green, I go once again over the foliage and again with my fan brush. This is how the great Dutch masters worked, layer over layer. You need some patience, but it will create depth in your painting. And everybody will be amazed about your masterpiece. At last, I put up some light orange here and there with my fan brush. After all, it's a sunset. But don't overdo it, just here and there. I will start with the lower part of the lock. I use dark grey with a small amount of burnt chenna and I use a round brush and of course my magic palette stick. This will bring your hand at ease. Take your time, don't get impatient. This is a great exercise. Above the dark paint, I paint a middle tone of grey and then I blend it in Roughly, not too precise. And don't forget to use some medium. I worked my way slowly up and I made the locks a bit uneven. Of course, as you know, there is a vanishing point on the horizon. And on my website, you will find a drawing with all the issues of this lock hole. Of course, we have to obey the perspective laws, but we painters have the freedom to smuggle a bit. Everything on this old walk home has become messy during the years, and nothing is straight anymore. Let's give it a nice romantic impression. This was exactly what Cornelius Springer did too. Sometimes he made a perfect perspective drawing and then he messed it up to make it romantic again. Sometimes he painted the house in the street which was never there, just because he liked it, leaving all the historian scientists in despair. I hope you do like my little stories about the famous Dutch painters. There's lots to learn from those guys. Remember, there were no computers in those days, no photographs, nothing. Cornelis went to his favorite place, um, for instance, the city of Enkhuizen. He sat down, did some sketches, went home and did the painting. The next painting is also made 
in the city of Enkhuizen. It's a beautiful city, worthwhile to visit if you ever come in Holland. Now, watch this, it's all still there. If you walk over that bridge, you will have a wonderful view over the harbor. I did it many times and it felt like stepping back into the wonderful history of this beautiful town. As I promised to decorate the log cabin, let's do a barrel to catch up some fresh rainwater. As you can see, I start with a dark tone. This is dark gray and a bit of burnt shenna. As you have, may have noticed, I love earth tones, and certainly in a nature painting like this. With some lighter tones of yellow ochre and a light of crimson and a tip of burnt shenna, of course, I will paint the barrels. Use a small, nice round brush. And on top of those barrels, don't forget to put up some highlights and highlights it's just some yellow ochre white and a little touch of red decorating a cabin like this is always a challenge but where no photos available and we will never know how it really was but it's fun to make up some decorations use your fantasy and you have all the time in the world to make it really attractive after all, it was only an office, but okay, it was the office of Robert Dunschmeer, the most important man of the coal mine industry. Let's move up to the front side of the cabin. Each lock needs some dark shadow and blend it in softly with a small, soft brush, but keep it rough. The pellet knife is such a cool instrument for making rough surfaces. Put some light gray and burnt shanna on your knife, make a little roll and spread it out softly and follow the direction of the wood. Let's work at the edge of the roof. The roof of this cabin is one big mess. So work easy and don't be too precise. With a small round brush and some dark gray, we will paint the dark edge with light grey, we, we will paint light edges on the wood. I think the roof had better days in the time Robert Dunsmuir worked here. He bought all this land from Sam Cliff. Poor Sam, he was a miner from Nanaimo. And he bought all this coal land for only $1,000 with a group of 10 friends. It's nice of course when you have a coal mine, but you need a railroad to transport the coal to the harbor. Sam started building tracks, ran out of money and into trouble. And Robert, smart as he was of course, he bought all the land from Sam. And the rest is history. And we are not finished yet. I told you it's gonna be a lot of work, so don't get impatient. In the shadow part, of the cabin, I will use darker tones on the average. You got less light here. Again, I put the outlines up with dark gray, and I always do a bit, little tip of burnt shenna on my uh, round brush. And as you can see, I use my friend the pallet stick to bring my hand at ease. And while you do the hard labor on the logs, I will show you my newest painting.
The owls are wonderful here on the island and I love to paint them. I never saw such a big owl in my life. Let's start to paint the roof. It's one big mass of planks, but that makes it so charming. I painted all the outlines with dark grey and now I'm filling in with a soft tone of grey and burnt shanna. With a small round brush I bring it up. You know, I love to mix burnt shanna with light grey. It's such a nice, dirty, rotten wood color. Don't paint the planks too straight, remember it's all messy I told you, and old, it's really old. I wouldn't like to sleep in this cabin during a thunderstorm, it might be leaking. While I'm doing the dark mud on the right side in the shadow, I will show you this cute little fisherman's cottage. It's not a log home, but it's all made from wood and the roof has the famous Dutch roof tiles. It looks very romantic. But a fisherman family lived in a house like that 100 years ago, sometimes with more than 10 children. And then the romantic times are suddenly not so romantic anymore. We just gave Robert a light above his desk. To make a copper lamp you can mix some dark yellow with burnt shanna and on top of it a highlight. Easy as that. Let's give him to a shovel. In those days there was no bathroom, so you needed a shovel to dig a hole in the crowd. And that was it. Unthinkable for us, spoiled as we are, but in the wild, wild west you had to improvise. And a swamp stinks anyway, so no worries. Here I put up some highlight on the left side with just a touch of burnt shanna, a little bit of ochre and titanium white. Of course we can do more decorations like some weeds and greens here and there. Here I start with a dark green and slowly I will bring in some lighter greens and maybe some flowers, whatever. Just use your imagination. Also with the barrel and just go ahead put some stones here and there and as you can see I did some work with a knife to make the mud a little bit more rough. And there's our website and no it's not a mistake those three F's you really need them. My wife Els made a beautiful website and you will find everything there. All the drawings, paintings, have fun.